583 players. And what an astounding lineup we've got at the final table tonight. This promises to be a great one here, Mike. A total prize pool of over $8.4 million. Action is going to be on the youngster, 22 years old, Dave Redlin. Yeah, usually we've got several guys in their 20s at a final table. Tonight, we've got only one, and he lays down the King Jack of Hearts. Pretty good hand, but right behind him, Ed Jordan with just 10 Good six point. of hearts. Ed likes to be called EBJ. Those are his initials. Well, he has raised us to 225,000. And look at this action behind him. Mads Anderson, the sports better from Copenhagen, has got an ace jack, and he's called it. On to Daniel Negrano with the button. He's got nine six of spades. And he's getting what we call a two gapper here, but Daniel likes to call it pseudo connectors because he likes to see a lot of flops and play a lot of pots, and he is making the call here. That play is looser than Paris Hilton on Saturday night. <laughs> Looks like this might be a cold deck, fellas. I'll let you guys. Well, Jim Hanna goes out, as does Joe Hashem, so we got three way action. Over 800,000 in the pot already. Here comes the flop. The flop comes 6 5 4. EPJ, who raised pre flop. His flop top pair. Yes, he has. And he's checking. It's first to act, he checks, and the guy that has no hand, Mads Anderson, he's going to bet it. And now Daniel Negrano, who also has top pair, but the worst kicker with a nine. He's in position on the button here. He is the chip leader. And Negrano with his top pair of sixes with a nine kicker is going to make the call, and Ed Jordan with the better kicker is going to fold it. The guy with the worst hand did the betting. Interesting first pot here. Here comes the turn <laughs> card. The seven of diamonds comes off. That's a scare card, and if there's a four card straight on the board now, and Mads is going to check. Yeah, Mads is getting scared. Didn't like that card. He's checking. Daniel swinging away with just his pair of sixes. 600,000. He's betting with two sixes here. Now we know, of course, Mads Anderson with absolutely nothing, just ace high. Yep. Well, he's going to lay it down, Vince. He took a stab at the pot. Got looked up by the aggressive Daniel Negreanu, and Daniel, as to his chip lead on pot number one. Pretty incredible by the young guy that called Kid Poker from Toronto, Daniel Negreanu. I mean, this guy just loves to steal, <laughs> be involved in every pot, table talk, you name it, he does it. He likes to see a lot of flops. He believes he can outplay people after the flop, so he's in action all the time. And Daniel's looking to set a host of records here tonight on the World Poker Tour, including the all-time money leader, as well as the most wins, tying Gus Hansen if he captures this title. Back on the green felt, it's going to be on the professional sports better from Copenhagen. 175. He's going up to make a raise of 175,000 to go. Well, the ace jack didn't work out, so he's going to play the ace 10. Daniel going out, as well as Jim Hanna. And now Joe Hashem, he's got jack 10 with the button. <laughs> he's going to make the call. All right, David. Out with Queen 7 and the man they call EBJ, Ed Jordan, going away with Jack Deuce. So we have two way action here, Mike. Adds Anderson has the Ace 10. Joe Hashem has the Jack 10. Here comes the flop. Now the flop is Jack 4 4. Bullseye there for Joe Hashem. And Mads quickly checking, nothing materializing for him. Now Joe's going to bet 300,000 with the two Jacks. Going to play it strong. Top pair. He says, I want to get paid off. Nothing fancy here. Mad shuffling his chips. But he's also shuffling his cards to the muck as he exits the pot. Nicely done by the 40 year old out of Melbourne, Australia, Joe Hashem. You know, he's a former chiropractor, so he used to crack people's backs for a living. Well, he still does, Vince. He just does it on the green felt now. <laughs> I'm very competitive. If we're playing it for a $10 tournament, I'm just as competitive as for a $15,000 tournament. It makes my friends and relatives really sick at how competitive I can be. That's just my nature. Makes a lot of money in this game, and it's a pleasure to see him here on the World Poker Tour at this final table. It's been folded around to the former football player, Jim Hanna. He's got a 6-3 of clubs. He was a nose guard and a defensive tackle. Played for the Saints, actually, for a year. Well, he's called it, and Joe with King Six of Diamonds is not going to raise, so two-way action, King Six up against 6-3. Here comes that flop. It's come 9-5-3 with two diamonds. Jim Hanna, our football player, now in the catering business. 
It's my bottom pair, and he's going to bet out here 90,000. Yeah, he's got a piece of it, but the bad thing is Hashem has a four flush, four to the flush. 200. Well, he is going to raise it, Vance. I like this raise by Joe. And I like it because he doesn't care if he wins a pot now or if he gets action here. And he's going to try to bully the ex-football player. Not always the easiest thing to do. Good. And Jim can't take the heat. He's going to go away. The former defensive tackle. Got to feel like he got a pancake block put on him right there. And nobody wants to go out first. No Excellent. doubt about it. Daniel Negrano out in front with about $5.5 million. It's an energy, Back to the table. Drink. It's going to be on Ed Jordan. EBJ, they call him. Well, he's another guy that feels he belongs out here with these guys, Vance. We've seen him at the WPT final table before when he finished third at Foxwoods. He's back again looking to take down a title tonight. Raise. Two and a quarter. Well, he goes up. He's going to raise with his ace jack. Makes it 225. Mads Anderson folding little pair of deuces. Daniel Negrano looks down and finds two aces. Oh, boy. And just calls with them. Now you talk about trying to camouflage the strength of your hand. Daniel is certainly doing it here. Now it's on Joe Hashem. Joe's got queen nine of hearts in the small blind. Well, the problem with limping in with two aces is it puts more money in the pot and it gives the opportunity for more players to call behind you because of the pot odds they're getting. Oh, cool. Joe Hashem's going to make the call because of that. David Redlin folding. So three-way action, you're right. But you know you got to mix up your play. You can't get predictable. Daniel is the king of that. Here comes the flop. Well, the flop is king at 7-4. Joe checks. Four fifty. EBJ is coming out even though nothing hit on the flop. Now he's making the continuation bet, Vince. He's going to represent a king and hopes nobody has one. Just trying to pick this pot up right here. It's not going to work, though. We know Daniel's going to play these two aces. Make it nine. Oh, Daniel has doubled the raise. He makes it 900,000. And no limit. That's a very scary thing to have happen to you. And EBJ. What's he thinking about, Vince? Uh, he He's not like, going to call here. Is he thinking about coming over the top? It's like a deer caught in the headlights right there. Oh, he does. Looks like Humpty Dumpty on the wall. Mm. And the pieces are about to come apart here if he makes a move now because Daniel is going nowhere with this hand. It would get very messy if he should take a stab at this. Totally messed up. Now, Vince, he's a vein about his hair as you are, looks like. <laughs> well, wisely for EBJ, he evacuates the ship here and he goes out. Daniel showing the cards, though, showing the aces, giving a little <laughs> relief to EBJ. Fourth of Daniel Negrano doubling the bet. Make it nine. Very scary when a guy does this. But the problem is when you play against a guy who doubles the bet, you don't know if he's just making a small move on the pot or if he's got a big hand where he is trying to lure you in and trap you, so to speak. He plays like a lot of the greats do, where you can't ever put him on a hand because they do things differently all the time. <laughs> Nice hand there for Daniel Negrano. He extends his lead. If you play poker really well, you approach it like you would chess. You know, when the move happens, you don't just go, well, what do I do now? You should already have a game plan as for, well, what will I do if this is about to come up? I'm all in. What's that? All in. You, you want it. I call. Daniel, world class player, obviously. His record speaks for itself. He's definitely, you know in the class of his own. I remember watching Michael Jordan do an interview where he talked about being in the zone and saying that the basket just looks this big. And when I'm in the zone, oh, yes. I just feel like I know exactly what to do. I call. In every yes. situation, it's easy. I know what everybody has. It's just smooth. Daniel Agranio is unbelievable. He guesses my exact two cards when I'm in the big blind. I could have any two cards and he knows exactly what I have. Gimbal. It's almost sinfully confident how confident I am right now. I, I know how important this tournament is for me because I have a little checklist. World Poker Tour Player of the Year win multiple times. Let's do that. Let's win back-to-back -back tournaments, win the most World Poker Tour events. And this event, ooh, this crosses off a lot of those checklists. This is big. I need this one. Vinci is widening the gap here, and I've never seen Daniel look so confident entering a final table as he has tonight. All right, action is going to be on EPJ. Race. With a seven, eight of spades is going to raise again. It comes in for 200,000. Sitting right behind him with a pair of nines is Mads Anderson. Let's see what he's going to do here.
Free race. Well, he is coming over the top of the two nines here, though. Six and a quarter. Protect that mid pair. And he's going to make it 625,000 to go. Into Daniel Negrano, and Daniel's picked up a big hand as well. Ace King with the button. Well, Vance, he's in position. Now, we know he's got a lot of chips. But many pros, when the pot's raised and re-raised in front of him, would lay down Ace King here. But not Daniel Negrano. He makes the call. And now it's on Jim Hanna. Well, he has the same hand as Daniel. Remember, the pot was raised, re-raised, and called. He's got to lay it down. Too many players and Joe Hashem going out. Action back on EBJ. Call. And he is making the call, Mike. I don't blame him here, Vince. It's a huge pot in there right now. 1.6 million cost him 400,000 more to call. So he does make the call. So three-way action here. Over 2 million in this pot. Tasty little suited connector. Seven, eight of spades. Up against nines and ace king. Everybody holding their breath right now. And the flop comes queen, queen, ten with two hearts. No real help to anybody. Action's on EBJ. He's going to check his eight high. Now the man with the pair of nines, Mads Anderson. He checks. Well, Vince, he's scared. Not only because the guy raised in front of him, but Daniel called two bets behind him. Well, Daniel has an inside straight draw, but here we go with the turn. They all checked. Now the four hearts pops off there. Long. EBJ with the 8-7 of black cards is going to move in here for a million dollars. Absolute zip and pip. That's if Mads Anderson calls him here, his opponent's drawing completely dead. Well, how would you call with a pair of nines at this time? You right. got a big pair out there. You got three hearts, and he's going to lay it down. And now it's up to Daniel. Daniel does have the fourth heart and an inside straight draw, and it's a big heart for King of Hearts. What do you got? Not, not what do you have in your hand. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm thinking you probably hit like the queen or something. You got like scared three queens, it looks like. That heart, you didn't like it too much. Daniel's going to soon realize there's three million dollars in the pot. Cost him a million dollars to make this call. But as it is, he's just got mm -hmm. ace high. That's okay, I can see it. Whatever. The guy who raised pre-flop has moved all in it's in front of like you here. Good or not, you know. Let's see here. If he puts his opponent on something like two sevens or two eights, perhaps he'll make this call thinking he can win the pot with an ace, a king, a jack, or a heart. Actually, you know what? Count it. <laughs> it's close. I think you got three queens, so maybe I can, like, suck out on you. I can't beat him. But... Daniel is off this time. He thinks he has three queens, but why wouldn't you? Well, how would you like to beat EBJ right now, Vince? Your tournament life's on the line. You moved in for your last million. You're up against certainly one of the top poker players in the world who's the chip leader at this final table. And you got to maintain your poker face right now. He's got 1,045,000. Is that right? Sound good to you? All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, 1 million. When Daniel starts talking, Put a bag over your head. Don't talk with him. Well, Vince, look at the poker face of EBJ now. He answered Daniel. You don't have to. I've played a fair amount of poker with Daniel Negrano. And my advice to everybody would be, if you're playing a pot with him, don't talk to him. It's just a little bit over a million dollars. It's a huge pot. This would be an amazing call. Well, this would be an all-star call, Vince. No doubt about that. So EBJ. Saying to himself, please go away, please go away. Daniel, please go away. Do not call me. You're not full, right? No, you're not. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe you have these. I'm definitely beat. <laughs> but I have outs, maybe. Eh, it's only a million. Oh, no, wow. he's doing it. What a call by Daniel Negrano. Beautiful. And that thud you just heard, folks, with EBJ's heart hitting the floor. Got eight high? Oh, I can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Tickle Pink. You are sick. You are the sickest, <laughs> you are the sickest puppy. <laughs> hey, don't give him an eight or a seven. That would be pretty sick. Now, folks, you talk about one of the great calls in poker history. Whether or not Daniel wins this pot, that took a lot of heart to make that call right there. A king eye flush draw, a gut shot straight draw. You could be drawing dead. Daniel sized him up perfect. Since he was bluffing and went after him. It would be a bad beat if eight or seven comes. Yeah. And the look on EBJ's face says it all. He's got a spike of seven or an eight that's not a heart. Otherwise, he's a sixth place finisher. Here comes the river card. Well, the six arts comes off. Daniel makes the flush and takes down the pot.
And EBJ gets to say goodnight here at Palacio. Wow, what a call by Daniel Negreanu right there. I thought I might have the best hand. <laughs> I saw this guy yesterday make a move with seven dudes off suit like that. Nothing, so I was like, joke. I mean, I really thought there might just be a chance he has nothing. You just don't suspect an amateur player is going to bluff his last chips when there's a $2 million first prize in a poker tournament. He did it there, and Daniel picked him off exactly right. You are a sick man. That is the sickest call I've ever seen. I mean, if I was wrong, I had outs, you know? Well, EBJ is now DOA, and he's up to talk to Sabina. Thanks, guys. I added, sorry to see you up here so soon. I mean, looks like you made a move out there, and it just didn't really work out. Yeah, I figured when uh, they both checked, uh, neither one had a hand. It didn't look like it. But when they both checked, I figured neither one made a hand, and I figured with a million chips left, it would be almost impossible for Daniel to call. And uh, it was a crazy call I made, absolutely crazy. But uh, worked out for him. Joe says the rest of the table voted. In. For a million dollars with just an ace high to take down that pot and eliminate Ed Jordan from this tournament. That's why Daniel Negrano is Daniel Negrano because he's not afraid to play. He's got heart and he's got poker instincts like no other guy on the planet. Right now, Daniel's got $9 million and a tie for the short stack between David Redling, the young 22 year old who hasn't played a hand since he left Chuck E. Cheese. He's got about 1.5 million. Jim Hanna's also got about 1.5. Well, yeah, with as many chips as Daniel's got now, it's not his tournament to win, but his tournament to lose. He is in the driver's seat completely. It's on David Redlin, and finally picking up a nice hand, ace-queen offsuit. One-eighty. And he's going to make a raise, going to one-eighty. Into Mads Anderson, who has a king-jack. Does he want to compete? Nope. Daniel quickly folds. Jim Hanna not going to play his king seven, so the only one to beat is Joe Hashem. He's picked up the double skirts, pair of queens. Well, he knows David's the tightest player at the table by far, at least so far. But still, you pick up two queens in the big blind, you got to love it. This is a big old hand. Joe Hashem checking out the kids' chip stack. All right. Well, he's going to come over the top. He is going to raise. Let's see how much he's going to raise. It's a $500,000 raise. That is pretty significant. Well, look, the youngsters watch a lot of World Poker Tour action events. You'll recognize the ace queen has been the kiss of death at the final table. Always a dangerous hand. We know that. But can he get away from this at this point? Mullen. No, he's going over wow. the top. I'll call. Then Joe has called him, Vince. Yeah. Well, the kid gambling, perhaps at the wrong time here, is tournament life on the line. Huge pot, nearly $3 million in this pot. Joe just slightly over two to one favorite to take down this pot and eliminate the youngster from this tournament. You folded nice. You folded a nice front. Right? You folded a nice. The notorious ace queen that has been victimized so many times, so many different players. Can the young player get lucky with it right now? Got in through a $70 satellite, and it's all on the line right now. I can't look at it. Damn it, Joe. I, 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 should, I almost folded it, man. Yeah. David Sandy should have folded it probably. Let's see if that's the case. Well, Joe Hashem can't even look right now. Here's the flop. <laughs> Well, so far, so good for Joe Hashem. It's come 7-4-4. The two queens still the best hand. I can't look, I can't look, I can't look. For David to win this pot, he's going to have to catch an ace, two running hearts, or two running fours. Right now, he's up against it, Vince. Well, he's over a 4-1 to one underdog right now to stay alive in this tournament. Let's take a look at the turn card. Queen, queen, queen. Let's go. Let's see the turn. Did you have to talk about the flush draw? <laughs> Oh, he's that ace comes right off on the turn. Oh, no. The three-outer on the turn. Joe Hashem is just sick about that card. Now, it's not over. There's one queen in the deck. And the look on the face of Joe Hashem tells it all right now. Can this really be happening to me? Every time you do it to me, huh? He is sick, and he is Without bitter. Time. He is surly. 
He is whining, but you know what? It's not over. He's got a one-outer. He's got to hit a queen to knock the kid out. He needs the miracle card. We're going to have to be lightning in the bottle, yeah. Vance. Only a 3% chance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! Wow! Can you believe it? <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh, my golly! A one-outer for Joe Hashem. Joe Hashem has won his pot and eliminated David Ridley from his tournament. Wow! One time! Oh, man, he's hit the lottery <laughs> ticket. He has done it, and he's got a body bag. Oh, my golly. David Redland out of this event. Hey, don't be upset at me. <laughs> well, Vance, when he gets back home, he'll still feel the pain of this hand, but in truth, he got in this tournament on a $70 satellite. He's taking home 253000 to you by worldpokertour.tv. And the two big names in the poker world, Danny Negrano and Joe Hashem, the two big chip leaders here now. Yeah, Danny's got about 8.8 .8 million. Let's go back to the table. It's going to be on Joe Hashem. He quickly folds a 7-4. And Mads Anderson now looking down at a jack-4. Mads going out. Now Daniel Negrano looks down at a king-4 in the small blind. He's going to limp in and make the call. The big blind, Jim Hanna, ex-football player. He has a 5 and a 10. He says, give us a flop. So a battle of the blinds here. Here comes the flop. Flop comes queen jack nine with two diamonds. Daniel quickly checking. That gives an open-ended straight draw for Jim Hanna. He's going to bet it too, Vince. Yeah, $80,000. Now Daniel has the gut shot straight draw. In other words, a 10 would make him a straight. But do you call $80,000 bet here? Daniel Negreanu does. He is going to speculate. He makes the call. Pot's warming up. Well, here comes the turn card. Well, the deuce of spade comes off. That's no help to either player. Now Daniel quickly checking. Let's see if Jim has the guts here. To 250. Look at this, Vince. The former defensive tackle is attacking here, playing offense here. He's bet 250,000, and Daniel flies away. So I'd have to say that you got to give Jim Hanna credit for a sack of Daniel Negrano there, wouldn't you? Yes, you do. Nicely bet a quarter of a million, chasing Daniel back to Canada on that one. But look at this, the wonder cam, I have to peek, comes up a 10 of diamonds. Wow, <laughs> that would have hit Daniel's oh. hand. I'll bet you coulda, woulda, shoulda, guys. It's what happened. Jim Hanna fired two shells at that pot. He earned it. Give him credit for it. No doubt about it. Nicely done. Action right back on him. And he seems to be a lot looser and happy after winning that pot. Looks down at his hand. Oh, wow, he's got a pair of kings this time. Picks up a real hand this time. 180. He's going to come in for 180,000. Yes, he is. Joe Hashem throwing away his five deuce. And now Mads Anderson with a 9 4 in the small blind. Not excited about that. He goes out. Round to Daniel. Now he looks down at a king nine. Daniel's known as a defender in the poker world, meaning he defends his big blind. So don't try to pick on him. Here he makes the call. He's giving action to Jim Hanna. Well, he is way up against it here. He's got the king nine. Jim Hanna with the two kings. Flop comes seven, six, deuce. Check. And Daniel quickly checks. 250. Jim with a big over pair. It's a quarter of a million dollars. Daniel Negrano with no hand and no draw is going to make the call, Vance. That tells me he's going to make a play at this pot if some kind of straight card comes off of there. A couple ones are easier. <laughs> yeah. He is splashing here. That's what he loves to do. Let's see if he can get lucky here. Here's the turn. Well, the board pair sevens. And sure enough, here goes Daniel reaching for chips here. He's going to bet 450000 He's going to try to push the big man out of this. But, of course, big man has got that huge pair. Well, Jim might be a little fearful that Daniel made three sevens here. But you're certainly going to play kings in this situation. Oh, that is a disturbing call if you, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> you know Daniel didn't like to see that. He knows his opponent has something now. Yes. He's not playing with an ace high anymore. All right, going down to the river. Well, the 10 comes off. Check. Daniel shows restraint. He checks here. Yes, he does. 450. And Jim just looking down at his chips is going to be enough to get Daniel out of this pot. So Jim Hanna, the former football player, catching Daniel a little offside there, I'd say. Wouldn't you, Vince? Well, Daniel, that's the kind of game he plays. He's so talented, he could play those kind of hands, mess around, and usually he comes out right. This time he did not. What are you going to do? And Vince, what about this amateur player from Slidell, Louisiana, up against these all pros? 
Could he possibly hang on and take down this title? What a story that would be. For me to win the two million bucks would be something that I didn't even remotely think I had a chance to do a few days ago. Poker's all about you knowing when you have the best of it and knowing when you have the worst of it and trying to make a good decision. Mentally, it's a lot tougher than a lot of sports because you've got to concentrate so hard and really try to pick and choose your spots and attack when you have the upper hand. No, I'm not intimidated. I mean, I used to fight 350-pound men that were gorillas. That, that was intimidating. When you walk out and there's a guy six foot eight, 360, and he wants to rip your head off. When you're sitting down next to Danny Negrano and Joe Hashim, you're not intimidated. <laughs> At least I'm not, you know? I mean, they, they can play poker. That's great. But they're not going to rip my head off. If they beat me in a hand, I can get them and walk away. I'm, I'm going to be all right the next morning. So Jim Hanna on a little roll right now, taking down the last two pots. And Vince, right now, he's probably thinking to himself, you know, why was I out there bashing heads with those 300-pound linemen all those years? I could have been sitting on a green felt making this kind of dough. Oh, you're right, what was man. I thinking? Easiest, easiest <laughs> living in the world until you go broke. Yeah, yeah. But he's a heck of a player. He puts the shades on as well as Joe Hashem. Sorry, boys. All right, let's take a look at his cards with the WPT cam. He's got a pretty good hand. Queen Jack offsuit. Man, he's got some chips now because he won that one monster pot a minute ago. Let's see what he's going to do here. 150. Well, he has bumped it up to 150,000 to go. And now it's on Mads. And Mads likes his hand. He's got ace nine offsuit with the button. And he's reaching for chips here, Vince. Race, 450. He is going to pop it up. Makes it 415,000 to go. Daniel releasing his hand. Jim Hanna with queen six. Won't play that, so it's back on Joe. And Joe Hashem, who raised it up front, got re-raised by Mads Anderson here. Does he want to take a flop with the queen jack? That's the question. It's another 265 grand to do it. He looks like he's getting chips out of Yes, he's going to make the call. Well, he said this is how they hook you up. You get involved with a pot and you put chips out there. That's what Joe's doing. Ace nine versus queen jack. Here are the first three. And the flop comes jack, ten, deuce. Nice flop for Joey's flop top pair. Certainly is, and he's going to trap a little bit. He is checking. And now Mads, who did not hit anything. 450. He's got to bet $450,000. Well, he's going to make the continuation bet. But Joe having flop top pair. He's likely not going to give this pot up. EBJ back on the front row watching. Well, Joe Hashem makes the call for $450,000. And Madge is not liking that. Going to the turn card. Here it is. Well, the five of spade comes off. No apparent help to either player. And once again, Joe Hesham checking his hand. He's got top pair. Got the guy on a string. Will Mads fire another shell? Nope. He's going to check. And once he checks, I'm certain Joe Hesham feels like he's got the best hand now. Here we go to the river. Queen of Hearts oh, wow. comes off on the end. He's made two pair now. Now, Joe, fearful his opponent might have an ace king here, checks. 800. Cool. Mad has bet $800,000 and a quick call by Joe, who has a pretty strong hand. He's just afraid in case the guy has ace king. I'm just going to check with a powerhouse. He gets the man to bluff. Well, the other reason for checking is you give your opponent a chance to a classic finish here because two of the biggest names in poker still alive and the chip leaders, two time WPT champion Daniel Negrano and the 2005 World Series of Poker main event winner Joe Hashem. All right, back to the table. Mads Anderson going out with three deuce. Daniel not going to play, and now it's on the battle of the blinds. Jim Hanna looks down at Ace Jack. There is. It's not compulsory, Jim. You've got to raise every time. It's not. <laughs> Don't do it every time. Whatever books you're reading, it's not. It's not compulsory. He is going up to make it 350,000 to go. Well, Joe Hashem has also got a pretty good hand. Pair of sixes wired up. And after Jim Hanna raised this pot, and he's raised the last few pots. Joe was asking him, what poker books have you been reading? Well, Joe's just going to make the call. Doesn't re-raise here. Wants to see a flop before he gets crazy with his hand. So it's ace jack for Jim. Two sixes for Joe. Here's the flop. Nine, eight, five. Doesn't help Mr. Football. It's on him first. 
And he checks it. Well, Joe has the gut shot straight draw to go along with the two sixes. So he's going to bet in hopes that his opponent has two big cards, which is exactly the situation. Well, he sees the opportunity. It looks like $450,000 into Jim Hanna. Look at this. Jim Hanna's reaching for chips, Vince. He is making the call here with the ace jack. Yeah, he is going to get stubborn here. Hopes to spike something nice here. Let's take a look at the turn. When a 10 comes off. Now, this does give Jim Hanna an open in straight draw. Interesting. It's his turn to act. And look at this, Vince. He is reaching for chips here. It looks like he is going to fire at this wow. pot on the draw, as we say. 600,000. This is a gutsy move. Betting into Joe Hashem. Can you take that card back in the day? <laughs> and I can tell you, folks, if you're sitting in Joe Hashem's seat right now, your two sixes have just shrunk up like a bug on a hot stove. Oh, Mr. Football just sticking around on the flop, hoping to hit something. Gets the open-ended. Nothing spectacular, but the bet is impressive. Well, Joe trying to figure out what he had to check on the flop and then call a bet, remember, and now lead out on the turn. Could he had something like Queen Jack? Queen 10, Jack 10. All those scenarios, of course, would have Joe's hand beat right now. But just taking this long to think and analyze this hand just shows you what kind of poker instincts that Joe Hashem has. Incredible. He's thinking about calling this with two sixes here. As Joe Hashem glances over at him. Taking a lot of time, Joe Hashem. Wow. What a call this would be if he'd call him with the two sixes here. But what a tough bet by the ex-football player. He's got the game face on now. Joe does lay it down finally. From now on, you won't be seeing any flops, Jimmy. You won't be seeing any flops from now on. Joe says you won't be seeing any flops from now on, meaning I should have raised you before the flop and won that pot. But what a play Let you get away with too much. by this amateur sitting at this table, Jim Anna. Vince, I'm starting to get very impressed with the way this guy's playing poker here tonight. His demeanor at the table is calm, cool, and collected. And what a story it was for him to even get in this tournament. He wasn't even playing. He came to watch his brother play and root him on. Well, his brother went out early on day one of this tournament. They had two day ones of this tournament. And his brother said, OK, I'm out. You get in there and play. I'm staking you. I'm putting you in there. And here he is at the final table. Let's go back to the table. It's on Mads Anderson. He goes away with King Four. And now Daniel Negrano with an ace 10. And he comes in for 250,000. Mr. Football goes out. And now Joe Hesham with a Jack Four offsuit. Well, a rather loose call here by Joe Hashem, in my view, out of position with a Jack Four offsuit. Let's see what happens. Dribbling the chips in. And here's the flop and a big ace there. Hits for Daniel. Joe checks. Daniel's going to bet the two aces here. And Joe is calling with a gut shot draw here. Well, very peculiar call, in my opinion, by Joe. He does have the jack of clubs, though. In case it comes two clubs. Well, but Joe's a little down on himself from the last hand, I believe. But not raising before the flop. And he's limping around to this one. Three of diamonds on the turn. Well, he certainly wears his emotions on his sleeve. And Daniel Negrano picking up on it. Well, he's checking Daniel betting again. Daniel thinks his aces are the best hand, which indeed they are. And you can just look at Joe and tell they're the best oh, hand. Boy, he is drooping right here. $400,000 bet. You got it. That's for sure. Joe lays it down. Didn't want to make two pair. I didn't want to make two pair. Well, a little lackadaisical play by Joe there, in my opinion. There's a case he probably put 400000 in the pot that he shouldn't have. I say that because even if a 10 comes off or Joe would make a straight, there's no way Daniel could probably give him a lot of action on that hand because you're going to assume your opponent might have made a straight. He called a pre-flop raise for 150 and then called a bet on the flop for 250 more. Those 400s add up. Right now he's in the sad puppy dog mode here. He needs to perk up. He's in great shape in second chip position here. Well, Daniel's picked up King 10. He's going to make it $250,000. Jim Hanna with Jack nine of spades. Cool. He's going to make this call, though. Well, it's the kind of hand you like to see a flop with. And now in the small blind is Joe Hashem. He's got a wired pair of threes. Also a playable hand. 
I'm going to raise to 1.2. Wow. Wow. He's going to make a monster raise here to 1.2 million with a pair of threes. Now, Vince, do you think losing those last two pots has sort of helped boost this raise a little? Yeah, he's tilting like a three-legged bar stool, if you ask me. He's going to wow. push this one up. Now, Mads Anderson's got an interesting queen jack of diamonds. Can't figure he'd play it and know he well, goes out. Daniel quickly going out with the king 10. The only one to beat is Jim Hanna. Go ahead, man. And he's going to release it. So there you go. A little power poker by Joe Hashem to get some of his money back there that he dumped off the last two hands. When you make a play like that and you win a pot like that, it calms you back down and you go back into normal playing mode again. Let's see if Joe does that. Well, that is good for him because for a while there, the Aussie was scheming like an outback summer. But right now, and the lone amateur at the table, Jim Hanna, is in third with 3950000 But on the short stack is the Dane, Mads Anderson. Peeks down at ace queen. All in. Yes, he does, and he's going to push it all in there. Well, he sure is. He's going for it right here. He doesn't care that this hand's a jinx on the World Poker Tour. He's moving in with it. Yeah, but Daniel right behind him, capping his cards. He's got ace nine. Now look at the face of Mads. I mean, he, he looks really mad here, doesn't he? You know, that's what Daniel's trying to figure out is, he's saying, why would a guy overbet the pot like this if he had a real big hand, aces, kings, queens, or jacks? He's only going to bet about 250 or so to get action. Well, Daniel is thinking about this. It's like 970. Trying right to read Mads. Well, Daniel thinks Ooh. he's got something like king high or queen high. He's going to make the call. He just doesn't understand why Mads would make such an overbet here. <laughs> but I'm not a fan of this call by Daniels. I'm not saying that because he's beat here. I'm saying because even if his opponent had king queen or queen jack, he'd only be about a dollar fifty underdog to win the pot. If he's got a small pair, you're in a race situation. I just don't like making a call for an all-in bet with an ace nine offsuit well, Mike, in this situation. He's doing it for his reputation. He's a gambling kind of guy. He's giving some action right there. So Mads Anderson, well, all those chips in the pot. What's that? You might have thought your ice was good. I wouldn't call if I didn't think I had the best hand. Daniel's got the chips where he can afford to make a call like this. Let's see if he can get lucky. Wow, Queen comes right in the flop. And look at Gus Hansen over there, his fellow Dane, cheering him on here. <laughs> Gus, you're smart. Beautiful flop from Mads <laughs> Anderson hitting top pair. Here comes the turn card. Well, it's an ace. That's going to do it. There's no card Daniel can catch to win this pot now. Mads Anderson going to double up here. And Vince, I'll tell you one thing. In case he wins this tournament, they're going to have to rename it the Danish Poker Open. Because out of five years' time, that would be three Danes that have won this event. Last year, Renee Peterson won. Certainly in season one, we remember Gus Hansen winning. And could Mads Anderson from Denmark also take down this title? That is amazing to me. You know, action's back on Daniel here. Very special. Yes, it is. The chip leader looks down at Big Slick, Ace King. Well, he's going to raise it, comes in for 250000 Yes, he does. Jim Hanna lays down his queen deuce. Joe out with king four. Round to Mads Anderson, who just doubled up the last pot against Daniel Nograno. Looks down at a jack nine here. He's going to make the call. Hope to hit a flop where he can double up yet again. And giving Daniel some action. Is it going to be his momentum, his rush? We will see. Flop comes up 10-9-4. He hits a piece of it, the pair of nines. Well, he's out front right now. He checks, and Daniel checks the ace king right behind him. Here we go with the turn. A nothing card, three of hearts. Well, Matt's got to feel like his two nines are the best hand now, so he bets 300,000 at a pot that's got about 600,000 in it. Daniel with just the ace king. He's going to make the call. He's going nowhere. Well, he thinks the ace high might be the best hand here. He's behind right now. Let's take a look at the river. Oh, it's a king. Wow, he caught the king. Well, Matt's checks here. Doesn't like that card. Potential straight out there now, an over card. And here comes Daniel firing 600,000. Mm. Well, Madge is going to make the call with two nines, oh. and he's going to be a little mad. Look at the face oh. of oh. Mads Anderson there. Oh, that's going to hurt. Daniel is in a oh, very good scary. mood. Well, why not? You're the chip leader with four players left, going for your third you World Poker Tour title. <laughs> How can you not be in a good right. mood? <laughs> All right, action He's on like, the ex-football player Jim Hanna from Louisiana. <laughs> Throws away a king seven this time. Joe Hashem going out. 
Yeah, around to Mads Anderson here. Him and Daniel have clashed the last two pots. All in. And he's going all in here. With a suited connector, 6-7 of hearts. Daniel Negrano looks down at ace four of diamonds here. I need another count. I think we're back to like the same. About the same? Yeah, yeah. I guess. Now, Vince, this is a different scenario same. than the other situation we saw where Daniel Coleman with the ace nine offsuit. Here, he just put a bad beat on the guy on the river, and he knows very well that Mads can be moving in with virtually any two cards in this situation. Mads squirming in his seat there a little bit. Little love. Did not want to call. He was saying, why do you have to do this to me, Daniel? Well, Vince, he doesn't look like a man of confidence here. Not at all. Well, tell me what it is. The way Daniel is eyeing those chips and the way he thinks Mads might be on tilt here. I'll be surprised if he lays down the ace high here. 820. Don't let's not hear that voice. It sounded very weak. Let's try again. Daniel's going to make the call. And this time, Daniel's the favorite to win the pot and eliminate Mads Anderson from the tournament. You got a shot. 50 50. Yeah, <laughs> flicking the cards across the table. Not very proud. About a coin flip. So, Daniel with the ace four diamonds. Mads Anderson with a seven six of hearts. Mads must win this pot to stay alive. As the cards lie, he's only about a three to two underdog. And Mads going to the water bottle numerous times. Here comes the flop. Flop comes queen, jack six. Mads Anderson is taking the lead with the two sixes. It's a coin toss. It's a good flop for both of them. You had to be happy with the flop, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's better now. It's well, note that Daniel has the nut flush draw. A diamond would end this thing, and ace would give him the lead. Here we go with a turn card. <laughs> Well, the eight of spade comes up, so we are down to the river. For Daniel to win this pot, he must catch an ace or a diamond. Gus Hansen happy about that card. His man now in good shape to win this pot. Looking on as his fellow Dane trying to hold off Daniel. Daniel hits the flush and takes him out. Well, Mads Anderson, a great sport. Handshakes all around. Mads Anderson losing yet again on the river to Daniel Negrano. Well, the scene is done.